what I'm going to do, Mama, is mainly focus on your Gillingham career, but also yeah. go back to your youth career in France and then on to Stoke and playing in the Premier League. Okay. So if you can, because not many younger Jills fans will, will know your youth background. So where did you start playing football? For what clubs were you playing for? And how did your move to Swansea sort of uh, come about? Yeah, so I started football when I was 10 um, uh, in Paris, in, uh, in south of Paris, like uh, in suburb of Paris called Bagneux. Mm -hmm. um, so I started at 10. Obviously, I start football. I didn't know anything about football. My parents was not involved in football at all. So even friends, I didn't have many friends who was playing uh, football in, in club. They were playing outside, but not in the club. So the, the way I went into football is, uh, is, is a guy just come, uh, coming to, to, to our area from uh, Senegal. Right. So it was new. So this guy came in uh, where we live. And uh, he, had, he had some good skills and he's doing some nice things with the ball, like keep ups and, and stuff like that. So I was a bit, uh, you know, uh, how you said, uh, intrigued by that and uh, trying to, to do like him. So this is the way I start playing football. So he, this guy went to, uh, to this club in Banyu. So, so he didn't know where the club was, so I had to take him there. So I was young, but I, I knew where the club was, so I took him there. So. So um, he went to play for the clubs, and just after that, I decided to to go with him. Right. So this is the way I started. So I started the, the football at, at ten, yeah, in Banyu. Were you always a striker? No, no. There's like that's lot of uh, people does, does not know that. So I only changed position when I become professional. Right. So before that, uh, when I start football at ten, I always play centre back. So oh, I play right. centre back. Yeah, I play centre back until fifteen, uh, I would say. So fifteen, I play centre back, and I change right back, left back, centre backs. So until until I would say to, yeah, twenty twenty. So at twenty, uh, because obviously I was twenty, and therefore like football was over, so I will never become professional. So I decided to just to enjoy, you know. So the last club I went to, I said to them, look, I'm a striker. So I'm playing off front. So it was it was not a like it was an amateur uh, uh, league, uh, amateur club. Uh, so when I went there, I said, "Just look, I, I just want to enjoy the football." So I knew I could play up front because I was doing a lot of futsal in um, in France. So technically, I was comfortable. Uh, but the only thing is, you know, I never had the the, the striker um, instinct, uh, uh, the movement, all these kind of things. So. So, but I knew how to handle the ball. Uh, so technically, I was I was comfortable. So, so when I went to that club, I said, "Look, I want to to play front." So uh, the first game of the season, you play me centre back. Oh no! <laughs> you play me nice. centre back. So, so I had a, I had a quite a good game, and uh, so I said, "Look, he played me centre back, but I need to show him like I'm not the centre back," you know. So I decided to take the ball, dribbling from the back, going front, and so he he, he been a bit mad. So after that game, he played me off front. Right. So since 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 that, um, I played off front. I think in uh, in twenty games, I scored fourteen goals. So it was not bad for for centre back. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was not bad for centre back. So so from there, I think that was that was my my. My luck, I would say. So we will call that a luck because uh, changing position, playing an amateur club in Paris, that gave me the chance for me to, to go on, on trial in Swansea uh, because I've done well in that season. And uh, so, so, the, so an agent decided to, to take me on, uh, on trial to, to Swansea. So this is where everything starts for me. It's quite a random move, though, isn't it, from sort of a, a club in Paris or northern France to go to Swansea? How did that kind of unfold was it just an agent who had spotted you or a scout from Swansea spotted yeah. no what's happened is in in my team all through the season I was, I was playing with a guy and he was playing left back in my team so all through the season he was playing with me and never knew he was an agent 
right. So at the end, okay. so, so 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 yeah. So at the end of the season, so is another agent approached me um, to go in Italy on trial, uh, because at that time I think Italy was more fashion, you know, uh, around two thousand. Uh, French players, most of them, they they go into Italy. It's not many is coming to 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 go into England. So normally I should go to Italy on trial. But when my uh, teammate heard that, he said, "Look, I'm an agent, so I can take you in uh, in England uh, to Swansea." So because it was the first opportunity, so I, I, I took it. So I said, "Yeah, why not? That's that's what I'm looking for, you know." Uh, so yeah, so from there I went on, on trial to, to Swansea. So the manager at Swansea at the time was it was it John Hollins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you must have had a, a successful trial period, and then you signed a, a one-year contract. Yeah, so I went on trial there. Obviously, it was everything new for me, you know, coming from non-league football um, and going to a professional environment. It was. Um, I was I was excited because I knew it was an opportunity for me. It's an opportunity I was looking for 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 a long time, so I thought it was a great chance for me to uh, to become professional. So when I went there, even knowing I was I had no experience at all, especially with my new position, so I said, "Look, I have nothing to lose. I'm go there and will give everything. You know, I will show them what I can do with no regret." So when I went there, um, I was on trial with two of the striker. They are proper strikers, you know, one nice. from uh, Argentina at that time. And um, it was another French guy as well. So, um, so John, the, the first week, I think I, I probably show enough uh, to, to the coaches and uh, they decide to keep me for a bit longer. Um, so at the end of uh, the second week, they decide to like, they, they will keep me. Uh, so yeah, I was, um, I was very happy. Um, obviously, you know, uh, coming from where I've come from and uh, and uh, being able to 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 sign the first professional contract, the, like the, the the time, you know, the the length of the contract at that time it doesn't matter to me. Even if it was two months, it was already a big achievement. So just wanted to, play. To, to Yeah, just wanted to. You know what? When I was uh, in Paris, the only thing I, I I wanted is to to go on because. The professional, uh, when when I was looking at the professional environment, it was more the crowd, you know, playing in front of big stadium and, you know, the, the crowd. So that was the, the most excitement. Obviously, with the time, a lot of things, you know, come around. But that was the, the first thing. So so coming to, to Swansea and signing one-year contract for me, was it was a massive achievement. Uh, so, yeah, so I was, uh, I was happy, very happy. And I think you scored on your debut. At Macclesfield, or home to Macclesfield, um, yeah. do you remember that? Yes, yeah, I remember that. So you know, to to be honest, everything um, for me when I went there, everything come together and everything was uh, it was nice. So straight away, uh, I had good relationship with uh, with everyone. You know, the coaches, the the teammate. Even though I was not speaking French at all, uh, speaking English at all at that time, so it was it was very very tough. You know, it was not easy. But they they take me like very well, you know. They they look after me very well. I was feeling very comfortable. Um, it was only nice people around me, so that make it easy for me uh, as well. So so my football, I enjoy my football. Yeah, like you said, the, my first season and uh, my first game at uh, Montreal, I, I scored my debut. So that make even thing even easier for uh, for me. That give me more boost and, and confidence. Uh, for the rest, yeah. I think Swansea had a, a difficult season. They, they survived go, uh, being relegated, but I think they were the bottom six or seven. So yeah. Towards the end of that season, had you already decided to move on, or did you have no idea what was going to happen? You know, it's a it's a, it's a long story. It's a it's a very long story. Uh, what happened is. Um, when I was there, obviously it was a tough season because we were fighting against relegation. Um, so it was uh, it, it was not easy, but for me, like I said, I was enjoying every minute. You know, the veg field for me was like Wembley. You know, playing in front in front of the crowd, and for for me, it was it was just fantastic. I had good relationship with with the fans as well. Um, so so that was uh, that was good. Uh, but in same time, I had 
few injuries there because obviously my body was not used to um, to the tempo and the, you know the, the the training everyday training and all these things. So I come from somewhere where you train once a week or two, you know. Even when you don't train, you I come and play the weekend. So it was different when I come to Swansea, training every day. So that's had an impact on, on my body. So I had few injuries, not big injuries, but few injuries keep me out of, of the pitch. So my last injury is uh, toward the end of the season. So I had an operation on my ankle, but it was just to clean, like just to clean the bone. So it was not, it was nothing, uh, nothing serious. So we had the few change as well regarding coaches. So John Orleans, he left and we had some other uh, coaches came in. Um, so at the end of the season, the, our skipper become the, the manager. So we don't have any, uh, any manager. So I just had my operation. So the, the, Nick, it was Nick Kuzak at that time, the, 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 the captain of the team. So he uh, had uh, an appointment with him. So he said to me, look, because obviously I was end of contract, my contract was up. Um, so I had my operation. So he said, look, you, had, you just had your operation, so we don't know how you're going to come back from that. So we can't give you um, uh, like another contract. So only thing we can do is to give you a um, monthly contract so until you get well and uh, you know you get fit and, and ready to go and then we can sit again and, and talk about contract. So obviously it was, um, I was a bit uh, frustrated by that because um, I know uh, even for the season was, uh, was difficult. I had a pretty good season for, for, for first season in a, in a professional game. I was uh, quite happy and I know uh, the club will want to give me the, the contract, but obviously I had this, uh, this operation, so they probably decided otherwise. So when they gave me that, um, I was, like I said, I was very disappointing. So I was ready to stay at Swansea. Uh, like I said, I was enjoying my time there and had a good relationship with everyone. Uh, so when he, when he gave me that contract, so I was not very happy. So he said to me, look, you don't have to, to set a, like to give you your answer now, you can go back home and, and think about it and, and sign the letter and send it back. So I said, okay, no problem. I will go back home and, and, and think about it. But between that time, I had opportunity with some other clubs. Uh, some other clubs were interesting. Um, so QPR, QPR was interesting. So I thought to myself, look, QPR want me. And, uh, and Swansea gave me a letter, monthly contract. So, and Kupia were like better standing at that time and any footballer you want to, to play the, uh, the better level. So I said, look, I had a good chat with my agent, the, the family said, is, they said to me, look, if Swansea wants you, they will have give you a contract because the injury you had is, not, is nothing. They know it's nothing. So obviously we decided to to go uh, for QPR. So yeah. So how close were you signing for QPR before Gillingham came calling? You know, so at QPR, I was everything was like done. I, I went there. I've done the the, the full pre-season, and yeah, you know, Holloway was the the manager at that time there. So everything was. I knew they they want me like before the season was close. You know, before we finished the the season with um, uh, with Swansea. Right. So everything was was alright. So I've done all the pre-season with them. So uh, what's happening at the end? They come to me. They said they look. They had some issue like money uh, issue. The chairman. I don't know. They said to me they have some issues, so they can't give me a contract. So, so this is where everything collapsed at the end of uh, the, the pre-season. So again, I was uh, I was very disappointing. So, so it was difficult. So my agent knows, like, after that, I will probably not come back to England. I will probably want to go back to France. And that, that's what's in my mind, to be honest. I said, look, uh, that, that's happened with Swansea, and this happened again with, uh, with QPR. Uh, I was missing home, and I was on my own, because don't forget that all this time I was on my own. And I come from a big family, so being away from the family was it was cut off. Even for it was a dream to uh, to become professional, but the, all this this time become like quite tough for me. So he knew if I go back, I will uh, I will not come back. 
So he trying to find all the solution uh, to, to stay uh, in England. So uh, with you half thinking of going back to France and maybe signing a contract there, when did Gillingham get in touch? Who was it that you spoke to that got you interested? Was it Andy Hassenthaler? Yeah, so again, uh, that's why, you know, in football, uh, not for me because I, I believe in God and uh, and that, so I will call his my destiny and some other people will say it's a luck, you know. So so what's happened is, like I said, my agent, he didn't want me to go back to France because he, he knows I will probably not come back. Right. So he said to me, look, I'm going to try to find a few people and... Um, and see what I, what I can do, what I can find for you. So, so I, I was outside of so the club QPR, so everything finished. I was outside of the hotel with my bag. So he ring me, he said, look, I just called someone. So it's gonna, they will like take you there, but what they're gonna do, they will put you in a hotel until I find something for you. Right. So, so in my mind, where I'm going to now, they're just gonna keep me for two or three days, you know, until, that's what he said to me. So until, until uh, he find me another club or trial or, or something. So I take my bag, uh, he give me the address. I take my bag, I jump to, into a taxi. So I went to this place and I come to the stage, to a stadium, small stadium. So I went there, I met uh, Andy Zantalia. Right. Uh, so my bag and the, and the team, they were already in dressing room. So they, they, they are the friendly. So they were ready to, to play a friendly game. So I come to the, to the dressing room. So I meet all the, 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 the players and, and sit down in the dressing room with, with my bag. Um, so, and next to me where I sit, it was Guy Epo at the time. Right. Yep. So I sit, I sit next to him because like obviously he was the one who was speaking French. So he asked me what you do, what you what you doing here, and uh, so I said, look, I just come here because my agent uh, said, uh, like, the, someone here is gonna look after me for a couple of days before I find me something. He said, okay. So um, he said to me, okay, yeah, I understand. He said, because for him, before I come on on trial, I said, no, I didn't come on trial. He said, okay, because we just signed like a few strikers, and that time was. Uh, uh, Rod Walla sent to me uh, Tommy Johnson. So, yes. so it was quite full. So that's what he said to me straight away. So I said, yeah, it's fine. I said, uh, look, I'm not coming on trial. I just come here to, to wait. And uh, so I remember I was sitting in the dressing room and and, and, and then Tyler, I said, do you have your like, stuff to play with you? I said, uh, I've got my bags, but I didn't come to, to play. <laughs> you know, and obviously I was not in mind as well to play. I was, uh, you know, just come out from some issues and my head was all over the place. So he said, look, if you got some stuff, look, I'm going to give you some kit and, you know, you will, uh, you, you will play. I said, I said, yes, yes, no problem. So, so, but, so you ended like up I playing said, in that game? So I went, um, I went, uh, I ended up playing in that game. So I went, I was on the bench first, obviously, because he, he, he already made this, so I was sitting in, in this in this band, you know. I'm not coming to play. <laughs> you see what I mean? So, so do you remember who the game was against? Who was the opposition? You no, know, I can't. I, I can't remember. It was a preseason. It was a friendly game, preseason game. You know, I think I'm sure like it was against a small team. I can't. I can't remember. It was. Long I have to find ago. out. I'll let you know. 2001 or two. Yeah, 2001. I think. Or two, yeah, no, 2002, that was. Uh, so I came on, second half. I play, but again, not in mind to, to sign or anything because I know I was there for a couple of days. It was just, uh, but I still play and show a bit. And uh, after, after, the, after the game, uh, my agent had the chat with uh, Andy. So he came to me and said, look, we're going to keep you until, uh, until the end of the week. So I stay, I stay with the team. So I end up training with the team and, uh, and everything. So we had another game and that was against Dover. Okay. Dover away. So now I thought to myself, look, I am on trial now. I'm not anymore like staying there, like, you know, so I'm on trial. So I put my mind, you know, ready to, to play and, uh, and, and show what I, 
I can do. So we went to Dover. Uh, we, we won the game comfortably. I scored three goals in that game. So after the game, uh, Andy, uh, Andy said to my agent again, we're going to keep you a bit longer. <laughs> and a bit, bit longer. Yeah, so the a bit longer was the last game of the season against Tottenham at home. Right. Yeah. So I went and played that game and I played well in, in that game. And this is where they decided to, to give me a three years contract. Fantastic. So from going into a stadium, just staying somewhere for two days, you ended up getting a three year contract. So you must have done very, very well. Yeah, the, like, like I said, I call, I call it like, it's a, you need a bit of luck and the, it's, it was my destiny. And, um, you know, com, coming from uh, non league football to League Two, League Two jump straight away to Championship, mm. obviously, uh, it's a destiny, a bit of luck. But in some time, I had the ability as well, uh, they, they liked, and uh, they decided to, to sign me. The playing in the Championship, yeah. Um, I think, did you have a slight injury at the start of the season? Did you have a little little niggle? Yeah, yeah. the thing is, I had a few injuries, you know. Like I said, uh, playing many games uh, like that, uh, for me, it was, uh, it, was, it was tough. And like I said, I never, even like between, and I didn't have any rest. Because coming from, uh, when I went to, uh, to Swansea, the season in France had just finished. So I'd, I probably had not even one week before I went back. I went to for preseason to to Swansea, and from mm. Swansea again, the preseason had some issues. So I keep training, training, playing. So yeah, I think I don't. Remember, I think I had. I think no. The, I, the, I played the start of the season. After that, yeah. I had a few injury again. So I think your yeah. first goal, for Gillingham was at home to Watford. It was a three 0 win, and then you went and scored against Ipswich at Portman Road, where we won the game. Yeah. And yeah. Ipswich was a good place for you because I seem to recall you scoring there twice in two years. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, yeah, it's true. Against Ipswich, uh, I scored. Yeah, I scored on the road there, and uh, it's a place. To be honest, I like. I like to play. Obviously, they had the nice stadium and the environment. It was great, and uh, I always had a good game against uh, against Ipswich. Yeah. When you uh, go to a new club, obviously getting a couple of early goals does that help? settle your nerves and kind of help you bed into the club just a little bit more? Of course, of course there is. You know, when you, you come from League Two to to Championship and they, they had already signed strikers. So I know I will have to fight very hard, you know, mm. to, to be able to, to play. So in, so in my mind, I will be there, but probably be the fifth choice, you know. And, uh, in the, and if I manage to play, it will be fantastic. Mm. So when uh, when I came up the first season against Wimbledon away, uh, John um, Rod Wallace and Tommy Johnson was they were injured, right. so I've been able to to play. So I feel like this is going to be my chance to show to everyone what I'm able to to do. So the fans they don't know me. Uh, the only thing they know I come from League Two club. And uh, yeah, so that's the only thing they know. So that was a good opportunity. It was Wimbledon away, not an easy game. So I had to to to, to give everything. So um, so yeah, I think I had a good game in that game. We draw, I think there. Okay. Uh, first game of the season, we draw there. So it was a, it was a good game. So I think it was a good introduction um, to to the fan. And uh, yeah, and from there, I think they know what I, I was about. And uh, the manager, they had the more confidence in me as well. They see that I'm able to, to, to play in the championship. How quickly did you settle into the group? Because everyone always says that Gillingham squad was very close. They were good friends. And everyone seemed to get on very, very well. That's what makes things easier. You know, when you come to a dressing room, the old friend is a good atmosphere. And dressing room is always easier to, to get into. You know, so like I said, like in Swansea, you know, when I come there, they they welcome me very well. You know, uh, I had a good relationship with uh, with everyone. With Gear Point being in the squad who speak French, that make it thing easier mm. as well uh, as well for me. So, so the introduction was uh, it was good. I had a good relationship with Wendy Zantala, with the chairman, um, Wendy. Yep. As well, she helped me a lot when I was there. Uh, so so now yeah, it was uh, it was good. It was good to make it like I like I said I was I was comfortable in the interest room and it was very friendly. It was good. 
Obviously, Andy Hessenthaler, he was Gillingham through and through, he made hundreds of appearances. Um, did you notice from day one how passionate he was about the football club? He was, he was very passionate, you know, and special ideas. I was, I was very, very impressed with him because with his age, um, the, the amount of game he has done and the, he was a, like a proper leader in the, in the, because he was a player manager you know, when I came there, mm. so I was playing and then something was, he was a manager and he was a really tough player, you know. Uh, he always pushed us in the, in the right direction and uh, he lead, lead the, the team well. And pre-season was always up front, he was 30, eight or, or something it was always up front uh yeah, i was very impressed by him yeah yeah he was he was a fit guy for his age wasn't he i think he was playing into very, his very, very impressive uh, very uh, very fit very fit not only fit but he was also a good player good players yeah. very uh very determined on the pitch and uh it was good to to have someone like him on, on the pitch as a manager, when he was out of the pitch and not been on the pitch, he led us very well. That season, your first with the club, we got Leeds United in the FA Cup and you scored at, at, at Priestfield. Um, from your time with the Jills, what was your favourite goal? Uh, favourite goal? Um, you know... <laughs> I will not probably say favorite goal, but important goals I will say because I think the one in the, in the FA Cup um, against Charlton mm. and uh, Leeds, I will probably say the, those one are uh, probably the, 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 the important goals because obviously playing against big clubs, you know, scoring against big clubs um, for players is always uh, fantastic, you know. Make sure that Gillingham keep the ball. Another one for Sidibe! Oh, what a header! Oh, what a turnaround! And Gillingham from Division 1 have come back from that setback and scored twice in the space of two minutes to lead 2-1. It was really good work by Tommy Johnson as well to keep possession. And then an excellent cross and well won in the air by the... Mali International who'll be leaving the club shortly to play in the African Cup of Nations. So being able to score against Leeds in the, in the FA Cup and uh, having the, the replay um, and beating Charlton was well at home at that time was uh, it was fantastic. Yeah that Charlton game was excellent I was going to come on to that because of all your goals that was my favourite that you scored across from I think it was Nicky Southall and you managed to get yeah. a serious amount of power behind your header was a cracking goal. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, probably this one, like I said, is a, it was a nice goal, but also an important goal, you know, uh, in FA Cup. So, so yeah, yeah, probably I will say probably this one, yeah, because uh, Leeds um, has scored and uh, we had the replay, but uh, the, we we lost on the, on the replay. But uh, the the goal against uh, Charlton, we 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 beat them and uh, we progressed in, in the FA Cup. So of course, it was, it was a bad goal. of course, for Gillingham to keep their status in the championship at the time was a, a fantastic achievement. Sadly, yeah. after a few years, we we were relegated, and that infamous game at um, at Nottingham Forest, the two-two. Yeah. Um, just talk me through that game because the, the players would have known what the repercussions were during yeah. the game. How how nervous were you? Very nervous. I think it was not the first time we've been nervous. I mm. think the season before was well against, uh, against uh, <laughs> yeah, but the, oh, even like, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, the the season just before that we had the same problem. We went to Wimbledon, and it was the last game of the season. So so we had the experience before. Uh, so when we went to to Nottingham, obviously. Uh, like I said, we were like all nervous because it was it was a very tough moment because we we're talking about uh, about uh, the club, you know, the uh, how we said uh, the future of the club. Uh, so it was a very nervous moment, and especially away from home and the difficult place. Nottingham Forest was not an easy place to go. So um, it was it, it was tough, but I think we we start the the, the game quite uh, quite well. And uh, we thought, even though we were nervous, but we, we, we thought we were capable to go there and, and win the game, you know? So we went there, 
Um, we, we, I think the, the game was, uh, we had a, quite a good game, but they managed to, to, to score a uh, last minute goal. So that's, that's just killers. I think you uh, had a chance towards the end of the right? game, didn't you? I think you had a chance towards the end of the game to win it. And I can't remember. I can't quite I think remember. I, scored that. I think I scored, scored that game, no? You scored, and I yeah. think you had the chance towards the end. But um, regardless of that, when the full time whistle went and you, you knew that crew had stayed up, what was the feeling like in the dressing room? Because you were such a tight group and it must have hurt. No, of course. Of course. Like I said, uh, you know, when you talk about the luck, like, this is a club, you know, the future of a club going down, get relegated for the, you think about everything, the fans, you know, everything go through your mind. So it was tough. Everybody was down. Obviously, as a, as a player, uh, you always want to, to, to give the best and you want to win for your club. You want to, you know, to make the, the fan happy. And uh, so it was very tough. Uh, we, we have not been able to, to keep the, the, the club in a, in a championship. So it was, um, it was a very tough moment for, for everyone. Everybody was down, obviously. Yeah. And of course, your next move was to go on to Stoke City, who ended up playing in the Premier League. I mean, for you, that must have been a very proud moment to play in the Premier League for the first time. Yeah, no, definitely. But like I said, uh, I, I, before that, I spent three years in um, in Gillingham. Mm. Uh, three years, even for like we fight against relegation, but it was very good time for me. Uh, I spent a great time there. I had a good relationship with everyone, the, the, the fans as well. So... Like I said, in uh, everything, every player, you always want to, to play at the biggest level as you can. And, um, you know, so, you know, like I said, is is the destiny. I will probably never go to uh, to stock if the, the, the club will not relegate it. They've been relegated. Like I said, I was in a good environment, uh, living in Medstone, not far from, uh, from France. You know, I was not far from Paris. Can take my car in two, three hours I was in Paris. So I was very happy there. You know, very happy. So obviously we went down. So players, you have ambitions. Uh, I was young, so I had a good opportunity to to stay in a, in a championship and uh, keep my dream alive. The dream as any players is to to play in a, in a Premier League at the highest level as you as you can. And at that time, I was also playing for a national team. So um, I had to play at a good level to, to keep my, uh, my place as well. So it was not, um, it was not easy, you know, to, to, to live somewhere where you have friends and, uh, you know, you have a good relationship. But in the same time, I have to, to go and fulfill uh, my dream as well, you know. So, yeah, so I went to, to Stock. Um, Stock uh, were in championship at that time. Uh, we played many times. Uh, with Gillingham against Stoke, and uh, we're always at the at the good games against them. Uh, but like I said, the defense they were in championship, and uh, we've been uh, we've been relegated. So so yeah, so so I went there, and uh, and the rest is uh, history. It's, it's history. Um, you, you mentioned playing for your country. I mean, going from a lad who was playing in the amateur leagues in France to waiting for two days in a hotel, waiting for something to happen to then play for your country. On reflection, it's, it's a great story. No, it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, like I said, at the, when uh, the, they had the, the first African Nation Cup in Mali, I was watching that at home. Mm. And I would never fall, I would play there, you know. Uh, coming from where I come from and, and thing, you know, you, you look at that and it's just a dream, you know. So for me to be able to to go and play for for my country, it was a, it was massive achievement, and also a very proud moment for for my family. So so yeah, so I born in Mali. I left Mali when I was two. I never go back there. Uh, like mm-hmm. I go back there when I was eighteen. So yeah, go back. I, I go back there once when I was eighteen. So so being able to go back there as a as a as a player for the national team it was it was fantastic for for the family. Yeah. What's your what's your proudest moment in football? I think my proudest moment is is few, you know. So it's the first my first professional contract, mm-hmm. of course, because that's everything starts from from there. Um, when I signed in the championship for mm-hmm. Gillingham, 
Yeah. Because that was the most of achievement coming from the league to, to, to championship. So that was a, a massive achievement. Um, and after that, I was playing in the Premier League. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that was the, the, the biggest achievement, you know, uh, get uh, promoted in the uh, in Premier League uh, with Stock. So, so, yeah. So those two, three, I would say. Reflecting on your time at Gillingham, because you had a really good relationship with the fans, um, if you had to pick, I know you've chosen a couple of your favourite goals. What was your favourite game to be involved with at the Gild? Uh, I think that will that will go with the goals. Probably Shelton, okay. I would say again, because the FA Cup is a you play against a big club. I think Charlton at that time they were in the Premier League. Yes, they were. Yeah. So they were in the Premier League. So playing against a Premier League team. And scoring a goal in front of uh, your crowd, and uh, so I will probably say, yeah, probably that one. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I will uh, if I have to choose one, I will choose that. And also the the last game of the season, Wimbledon, uh, when we uh, managed to to stay in the league, uh, my second season, mm -hmm. uh, Wimbledon away, the last game of the season, uh, I say it was a tough, tough moment because. You know, uh, we came to, to the last game of the season. You don't know if you're going to stay in the league or not. So that one as well, um, it was away from home. Even for, it was probably not the best game. Uh, but the, the fact we managed to stay in the league, uh, yeah, that one as well. And as for what you're doing now, I think you're still involved with Stoke, aren't you? So for Gillingham fans who haven't heard you for a while, what are you doing these days? Yeah, so now what I'm doing since I retired, I, I'm working for Stock. So I'm uh, I'm working as an ambassador for the club, and also I'm a scout. So I started as a scout for the academy and the mainly abroad. So obviously I know a lot. Uh, I know a lot in, in France. So hello, <laughs> I think oh, I can still hear you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, because uh, like. I've done a lot in France uh, for the for the academy, uh, but I would say Europe. I've done a lot in uh, in Europe. Um, yeah. So, hello. It's just go away. No worries. I'm still here. Away. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> I can't see anything anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. No worries. I'm still yeah. here. So uh, you carry on. Yeah. So, um, so what I was saying. <laughs> What were you saying? Uh, um, oh, you're club ambassador at Stoke City, and yeah, so, so yeah, so so I'm um, I'm doing the I'm working for the I was starting with the academy, so I'm now I'm doing more uh, first team scout um, and still have an eyes on, on, on academy, but uh, yeah, so I'm I'm a full time scout uh, for the club. Superb. Well, hopefully, Mama, before too much longer, we can get you back at Priestfield as a a legend for the day, so you can see our fans for now thank you very much for your time stay safe you're welcome hopefully no we'll okay. speak again very soon okay thank you for all that lovely thank thanks mama cheers thank you, you soon thank you bye-bye